Let's waste time chasing cars around our heads. I need your grace to remind me to find our own. If I lay here, if I just lay here, would you lie with me and just forget the world? How many of you just thought of Derek Shepard from Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> I mean, every time my friends and I listen to that song, we only end up thinking about the tragic moments that keeps happening throughout the show. But even if you're not familiar with the show, how many of you just thought of a situation where things didn't go as planned? Maybe it was something at work, or something in your personal relationship, or just life in general. Were you thinking about it five minutes before I came up here? Why did this music remind you of that instance? Was it the lyrics? Was it the tune? Or was it something much more beyond than that? Well, that is what my talk is about. I am very interested in the connection between music and the human mind, and why some songs uplift our emotions, while others bring back rough memories. Today, I'll be discussing about the presence of music, our brain's response to music, and how we can use music to elevate our moods. So what is music? As the Italian composer Ferruccio Busoni states, music is sonorous air. And what that definition really means is that music is an abstract form of art where even the simple melodies constructed by the vibrations in the air create a rich and complex emotional experience. <laughs> tune emanated from Indian classical music, also known as Bhagyashri Ragam, which depicts the emotion of a woman waiting for her lover. But we can find a similar emotion even in a French song, which portrays the broken love experienced by both parties. Oui, j'ai menti, mon amour, parfois le cœur est bien tout lourd. Oui, j'ai menti à mon amour. Toi, je pleure, vers toi, je cours. Despite the cultural or the language barrier, we're able to feel the pain exhibited by both these tunes. Because no matter which country we're born in or what our socioeconomic status is, Music is the one factor that cannot categorize us or label us into a single box. Music succeeds when words fail. Music bridges a gap between the brain and the heart. Music enables us to navigate through our subconscious emotions, making them more conscious by bringing them above the surface. Speaking of brain and the emotions, in order to really understand how our brains respond to music, I would like you all to think of the act of listening to music as something similar to watering a plant. When pouring water over a plant, we only seem to notice the leaves that receive the water droplets. Similarly, one might think that our ears are the only ones to get in contact with the music that we're listening to. But the reactions occurring inside our body while we listen to music is very comparable to the chemical reactions occurring inside the plant while receiving the nutrients from the water. What we fail to notice most of the times is what happens below the soil, the roots. The roots create a strong foundation. They ensure that the plant 
receives the nutrients from the water and the sunlight, making sure that the plant is healthy. By the same token, the rich experience that we gain while listening to music is a, resu is a result of the amygdala, our brain's emotional center. The amygdala plays a crucial role in the release of neurotransmitters, the most important neurotransmitter being dopamine. When dopamine is released in the brain, our brain's reward and pleasure centers are activated, which is why listening to music is such a gratifying experience. Moreover, when we're listening to music, our motor cortex is also activated, which causes the blood to pump through the muscles in our legs, which explains why we tap our feet or feel the irresistible urge to dance to a fast-paced song. So how can we really use music as a tool to elevate our moods? Well, I would like to share a personal story. Like many other teenagers, when I was in high school, I was very, very lost. Uh, I struggled finding motivation to balance my academics with my extracurricular activities. And I constantly questioned my identity and had a really hard time finding my true passion. But even today, we all experience negative emotions and have a really hard time talking about them. And there's a whole other group of people who experience these negative emotions on a daily basis. Unfortunately, even today, there's a stigma associated with mental health. And we find topics like depression or suicide too sensitive to talk about and we try to avoid offering solutions like psychotherapy or psychiatry counseling. But this is where music can be a savior. We can use music to uplift our emotions and enhance our mental health. There was a study conducted in Germany that analyzed, where the researchers analyzed the psychological functions of music listening. The researchers assembled about 129 statements all reflecting the functions of music and how music really plays a role in one's life. Then the researchers asked their participants to rate each of these statements on a scale from zero to six, six indicating that they strongly agree with the statement and zero indicating that they strongly disagree with the statement. The, re the participants were also instructed to think of a situation where they will listen to a particular genre of music ranging from classical to jazz to alternative rock. By the end of the study, the researchers found that listening to music yielded in three functions. First being self-awareness. Participants viewed music as a means to induce self-related thoughts, and they found music to be helpful in making them more self-aware of the emotions that they were experiencing. Secondly, the researchers found that listening to music can help create social relatedness. Subjects perceived music to be beneficial in creating healthy relationships and creating social bonds. They were able to engage in meaningful conversations with their peers at school or even at work or even with their family members at home. Moreover, music therapists have shown that their patients use music as a tool to guide through their emotions and really process the, their thoughts and experiences. But we can all use music as a vital tool. For example, we can use a sad song to really help us process through the negative emotions and comprehend the situation that we're in. Cause baby, you look happier, you do. My friends told me one day I'll feel it too. And until then I'll smile and hide the truth. But I know I was happier with you. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Then we can pair it with a more uplifting tune to really enhance our emotions and elevate our moods. Here's a song in my mother tongue, Thelma. Mahyam mandiram kankat vittaygal idu yedu endri en man madanam payume netri indrum velum malam baale aatri kuda namba aas dan yari 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 who's the hero who's the hero kaka vanda vaatiyaro taka vanda paadigalai naran 
So no matter what kind of a day we're experiencing or where we are, we're constantly surrounded by music. If we can use such a common force and use it in an efficient manner, we can transport to a world that is more uplifting and positive. So the next time you listen to a song, make sure you pause the memories, stop the pain, rewind the happiness, and play the moments. Thank you. Thank you.